Uh, lower, 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 low. Right, so. Been a little bit of a while since uh, the last video, so apologies on that. Work is rather busy, which I wasn't quite expecting it to be. Um, so I promised you some NDB stuff, and NDB stuff is what we're going to do today. So non-directional beacons, uh, just wait for FSX to actually load up, but we'll be uh, coming out of Booker again, Booker Airfield down here. Um, at uh, near High Wycombe. Um, we'll fly out towards uh, Henton and then over towards Westcott uh, before then coming back down to Booker. So this should be a, uh, a reasonably quick uh, little flight. We've already done VORs. VORs are more complex. So um, this, this is just boxing it off. Um, we couldn't obviously, as you'll have seen in the previous video, we couldn't do that in the grub because it didn't have an ADF. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, now then, this is spawned in with the engine on. Okay, well, fine, so be it. Um, can I get rid of this? No, I cannot. That is a bit irritating. Well, never mind. Um, what I'm going to do is quickly get rid of some of the glare for you and I will turn my face light on. There we go. That's a wee bit better. If I was too much, isn't it? Stand by. Stand by. There we go. That's all right. Okay. So, cool. Um, as I say then, so we're at Booker. Right. Let me just quickly get myself online. Uh, E.g. TB. In fact, I can show you this. Why not? Rather than you looking blind. Oh, in fact, you're probably not going to see that if you're on a... Never mind. Um, so, our routes will be to the Henson NDB and then over to UCO. Nice and easy. We are certainly not a heavy aircraft. Uh, EGTB to EGTB, our divert is Bryce Norton, because why not? Our cruise speed is absolutely not going to be 150 knots, true. Uh, 100 knots is probably ambitious. Cruise altitude, cruise altitude will be 2,500 feet. Um, so let's file that. Okay, so that's you've seen that now. Yeah, I am going to uh, shamelessly re check engine shut down. Oh, I do actually have to kill the engines then. Yeah, I'm going to be recording this for BAV, the BA virtual. Check engine shut down. They are. What's wrong with you? Arg! Do I actually have to turn the magnetos off? No, come on, off, off you wretched thing. There we go. And our survey says, ah, right, in like sin. Okay, uh, and we are actually, <laughs> this is convoluted, isn't it? Uh, we're going to start the engine straight up again, because uh, otherwise we'll run out of batterias. Uh, I shouldn't need to prime it really. Clear prop and all that. Yeah, whatever. We're in a simulator. Why can I now not click this? Oh, you suck, FSX. Oh, there we go. I've got my click spot. Right, fantastic. Right, back, <laughs> back where we started. Excellent. So, the aircraft, so inside the aircraft, um, we obviously have a nav radio, whether that be nav 1, nav 2, and that's how we tune into our VORs, uh, and also uh, for ILS, which we'll talk about a little bit more in depth at some point. Um, for the NDBs, it's on a different radio, we're on a completely different frequency, rather than megahertz, we're actually down in the kilohertz range, uh, and that's using the ADF, uh, Automatic Direction Finder. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, so, Henton is on 433.5. So, 
decimal five. There's no flip flop on this. And then it will come up on our ADF here. Oh, no, have I not got... Oh, bugger, I really cut this up. I've not got a default position set up for my camera. So let's just quickly do that. Nice chase plane. Yeah, chase plane. Add default cockpit. Uh, I could also know the five Ps. If you don't, look it up. <laughs> Assign button. There we go. That one. Cool. So now, if I look over that and then press my button, hey, there we go. Fan dabby dozy. That will get us somewhere reasonable. Uh, so we're VFR, so we're going to score 7,000. I did that in the wrong order. Whoops. Never mind. Um, so VOR, so nav 1, nav 2, but we're going to be using the ADF down here. And really annoyingly, the yoke gets in the way. Flipping eight yokes. But that's enough of me bitching and moaning. See, look, you can't actually get any of the flipping switches down here. So fuel pump can come on, landing light, taxi light. I'm going to turn them all on now just because it's going to be a pain in the butt once we, uh, once we get moving. Um, weather. Booker, we've got real weather on, so we need to do that. So, Meta EGTB into Google. A. That didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Oh, I clicked on the wrong link. Uh, winds are at 0 to 0, 15 knots, 12 degrees, 1022 on the QNH. Oh, and this is an American aircraft. So we're in inches of mercury. 1022 hectopascals in inches of HG. 1022, was it? 3018. Fantastic. So 3018. Eight is about there ish, give or take. Uh, and I know the book is about 500 foot. Um, so, okay, quick look around. Let's get in the sky, shall we? And then we can go from there. No prop pitch to worry about. We haven't got a constant speed prop, which is nice. So, uh, all I have to worry about is the mixture and my abysmal attempt at taxiing. As per usual. Oh, I should have put the BA colours on. Never mind. Uh, we're in this rather drab aircraft here. Um, I've immediately forgotten what the wind was. So will remind me. I'll say that. I'm not streaming, am I? Zero, two, zero. And onto the grass, because I was looking at Google. Uh, zero, two, zero, so we're going to need to go to the other end of the runway. I could be really, really lazy and... Uh, just take off downwind, but I'm not going to. There's, <laughs> there's a reasonable amount of uh, air traffic on. We'll be staying outside of controlled airspace, um, so not too worried there. Um, let's get a bit of a Ryanair taxi going, shall we? Ryan Scare, Ryan Scare, yeah, there we go. Uh, oh, and I need to put the aircraft info on. There you go, so you can see what's going on. Progress bar along the top is going to be a bit hawky borky because we're going from booker to booker. So I'm interested to see what that does, but yeah. But you'll get the info down at the bottom here. Uh, obviously, ETA, if it even works, is just going to be chatting a load of rubbish. And again, I'm not paying attention. I'm looking at Streamlabs. But it's okay. We're more than capable of going on the grass. <laughs> ah, God, I can't use river pedals in flip-flops. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. Right, that's better. Uh, so, Booker traffic. Is there any Booker traffic, or is it just us? Let's just have a very quick look-see. Ping, ping, ping. No, we're the only ones. And let's just have a quick double check of the airspace restrictions. Three and a half thousand, five, five and a half. Yeah, okay, so we're all good to stay outside of the uh, outside of the zones here. Right then, power, power, full power.
One joystick cam. Um, do I want to turn on the webcam so joystick cam works? Whoa, huge lag spike as I turned on the joystick cam. There we are. Up, up and away at 90 knots. That's the perfect rotate speed for a Cessna. <laughs> Whoops. And, anyway, importantly, if we look down here on the ADF then, we can see it's now sprung into life, and it's pointing over that way. So, let's go over that way, shall we? So, we'll turn left towards it, until it is vertical, pointing straight up on the screen as you look. And that is us, now flying straight towards the NDB. There you go, well done. You know how an ADF works now on an aircraft. Fantastic. Easy as pie. Doesn't give us any directional information, apart from what bearing the NDB is to us. Um, so this aircraft, like we sort of saw on, on others, uh, doesn't have a spinny compass integrated. Uh, but what I can do is I can see our current heading is around about 10 degrees, so I can manually spin this round like that. Uh, and then that's, that's the equivalent of sort of spinning the dial on your silver type compass um, for, for your DOV and whatnot. Um, so that, that enables you to do some very basic taking of bearings. Now you hope Hopefully, maybe you, you won't have noticed this, but I can certainly notice it. We're not actually flying in the direction we're heading in. We are flying ever so slightly off to the left. The wind is pushing us off. Now, I can notice that because if I look like at that sort of an angle, it more or less looks like we're flying in a straight line. But I'm not looking straight off the nose of the aircraft. See, the nose is pointing over here, whereas I'm looking sort of over here. So what I would expect is if we maintain a heading, i.e. where the nose of the aircraft is pointing, of pointing straight towards the NDB, we're not actually going to fly in a straight line towards it. We're going to fly in an arc. But actually, it's going to be an arc the other way. Yeah, like that because the wind is pushing us and we'll constantly be just ever so slightly turning towards it and we'll end up going in a bit of a loop. So this is where really you, you absolutely would need to use a flight computer uh, and do all your calculations for wind. Mm. Lovely. So if we keep, all, all I'm doing here is I'm looking to maintain this pointing straight up. I'm looking to maintain 2,500 feet, which I'm not doing a very good job of, and around about 115 knots, which we're actually not doing too bad on the grand scheme of things. Gosh, I've not flown a Cessna. I've never flown a Cessna in real life. Um, I did have an opportunity when I did my flying scholarship. Uh, but I physically did not fit in the thing. So, um, but I, I unfortunately had to fly the Grob, which everyone else on my scholarship wanted to do, uh, and we drew names out of a hat, except for me, who got it by default, because I didn't fit in the 172, and I absolutely didn't fit in the Katana. Uh, so, so this lucky bugger got the nice low wing, fully aerobatic, excellent, you know, um, aircraft that, that we're all familiar with. So that that was quite nice. I got to fly the uh, the heron, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so no distance information. We have no idea how far it is. The only indication we'll get is the closer we get to it the more twitchy this needle's going to get and it's going to start spinning all over the place and we'll find it really difficult to maintain uh, on on heading, should I say, not on course, on heading. But it's not that far away. Obviously, I can see the moving map over here that you can't see, but um, you know, I'm trying not to look at that too much. 
sort of takes away from the realism for me more than anything. Uh, there's no point doing uh, NDB nav if I'm just going to look at the moving map. You know, what's what's the point? So here we are. Uh, if, there we go, and turn some lights off, why not? So it's still just flying straight towards the, uh, the NDB, as can be seen on the ADF. ADF in the, oh, you can't see the pop-ups. Huh, that's weird. I get a little tooltip pop-up. Can't see that. Streamlabs. Uh, and we're just going to fly straight towards this NDB. So, oh, we're slightly off course. Let's just turn in towards it a little bit. And see, it's getting really twitchy. I can't quite turn fast enough. That means we must be really close. Oh, and it's spinning all the way around. And it's now pointing backwards, so we must have literally just flown over the top of it. So let's key in Westcott, 355 decimal zero. So three, as you can see, it's dropped out. 355 decimal zero. And our survey says I've keyed in the wrong number. All right, 335 decimal zero. And it's sprung into life, and it's over there. Okie dokie, let's turn towards it. Oh, I'm even doing a nice coordinated turn here. Look at that. Beautiful. So turning towards it so that the arrow is vertical on the ADF. Right there. Oh, kick the rudder a bit too early. I forget. It's the high wing and all that sort of jazz. And now we're struck flying straight towards Westcott. But I say we're flying straight towards it. We're not. As we saw from the wind and all that nonsense, we're actually pointing the nose of the aircraft towards Westcott. Where we're actually flying might not be quite the same because of the wind. And what I can do is, in a, in a few minutes, well, once we get back on the ground, let's say, we'll I'll show you what the actual course we flew was or the actual track we flew was the more specific. But now you can really see we're flying sideways, hopefully. See, we're certainly not flying that way, as we can see we're going like that. I hope you can see that. It's, it's, not, it's not the most obvious thing to be able to see when you're not actually the pilot. So, yeah, flying straight towards Westcott, and then out of Westcott we'll go back towards Hen uh, Henton. Back to Booker, land. I'll show you the, uh, the trace on the moving map, um, and then we're done. That's, that's this video. This one will absolutely be very short and sweet. Um, some of the other ones have been a bit longer, but uh, yeah, that's that. So, it, it's, it's a compass that doesn't point north. Eh? Who's been watching Northern, who's made Northern Lights? Or what's it called? Uh, His, His Dark Materials, it's called on BBC. Well, I read the books. I, I, I don't read many books, certainly if they don't have pictures. I, I am absolutely not a bookworm. Um, but one of the, the series of books I have actually read, one of about four, um, is the Northern Lights trilogy. So Northern Lights, um, The Amber Spyglass and The Subtle Knife. Um, really, really well worth a read. If you're not a bookworm, those I definitely recommend. Um, the other ones, if you're curious, Harry Potter and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, along with Restaurant at the End of the Universe and So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. Those are hilarious. I've never laughed out loud while reading text on a page before, but uh, Hitchhiker's Guide is absolutely hysterical. Really, really good. And... Everyone knows Harry Potter. So we're just a little bit off course, so let's just turn. Just following this. Again, there's there's not much accuracy to be had here. We can't be that accurate. 
But we can, you know, we can be reasonably good on that. And again, it's not that far from Henson, so it's going to get twitchy reasonably soon, one would imagine. Since we're actually reasonably trimmed, let me just refresh my fermented grape juice. There we go, lovely. Oh, it's getting very twitchy now. Can you see how twitchy that's getting down there? Really twitchy. Yeah, and it's about to fall over. And there it is. And that's it fallen over. That's the that's sort of term we use. So, Henson, I've already forgotten what the frequency was. 4335. So, 4335. NDB's, oh crikey, yeah, not much adverse you're on this thing that early on. Uh, NDB's tend to have really good range on them, um, so uh, the range could easily be over 100 nautical miles. Um, so they're, they're pretty good for, for hopping from one to the other. Nice coordinated turn here. Again, just turning back towards this arrow. Frankly, that made you sick the way I pulled out of that. <laughs> oh, blimey. Uh, that's someone just out of radio range chatting away on that sim. And we'll fly straight back in towards Henton. And then from Henson, we will fly due south. So there's no navigational beacon, VOR, NDB, or what have you, or even a DME at Booker. Um, so we will be literally flying on a bearing. Now, the problem with that in wind is that we don't have that constant correction factor of this needle always pointing to the same place in space. So if we're blown off course, we'll just continue to be blown off course. Uh, but thankfully, it's not that far south of Henton. I obviously have the moving map. I might challenge myself to actually minimise that uh, once we leave Henton. In fact, yeah, let's do that. Let's minimise plan G. Obviously, you can't see that I've actually done that, so you'll have to take my word for it. But there we go. There it is, minimised. Um, oh, and I've got that spy up as well. Let's minimise that. That spies the uh, the little inlay you've got in the corner here. That just shows you all the online flights, of which we are one. Um, but I've minimised that, so the only place I can see that, obviously, it's not open. Inlet inset on my screen, it's only inset on the video capture, so I just won't look left towards the video capture. And actually, that's so far zoomed out and doesn't show us where the airfield is anyway, it would be no use whatsoever. So, purely flying on this NDB now, I have no moving map. In fact, I can prove that. I can prove that. But no moving map, it's been minimised. That's my screen, you can see no in, um, I haven't got the plan G thing. And then there's my screen capture screen there. There's no other hidden screens anywhere. That's it, it's just those three. Okay. Hopefully <laughs> you're going to be as confident as I am. <laughs> Uh, in fact, so much so I'm not even paying attention. Right, it is still in front of us. That's good. And I, I just know that we're flying due south. That's it. I'm not going to touch the mouse. So I can't bring that back in. I don't need to touch the keyboard. Um, I need to gain a little bit of altitude. That would be good, wouldn't it? Now, what do I have in my bonds? This hill. I know this hill is due north of Booker. I just know that from the terrain and having flown around here a few times. Not massively familiar with this area, but you, 
Yeah, in FSX, it renders stuff the same. Okay, I've got um, Orbex scenery for, for England and all, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so it looks a bit prettier than, than vanilla FSX, but still, um, you know, th there's many hills in the UK, but we've not flown that far. And the direction we've flown in is not towards any hills in the UK. We've not flown up towards the Peak District, uh, certainly not up near the lakes or anything like that. Um, so knowing your surroundings is, is, is very useful when you're flying VFR. It is your primary navigation aid. It's just looking out the window. Your secondary navigation is using all these dials and buttons and radios and all that sort of nonsense. So it's starting to get a little bit switchy. So we must be pretty close. No distance information from an NDB, remember. There's no DME associated to it. Yeah, there it is. Getting very, very twitchy down there now. And I'm just not going to be able to turn towards it. So I'm going to say we're over it. And I'm going to do a horrendously uncoordinated turn due south. And we'll just use the compass. And we'll fly due south until we hit Booker. Oh, just undershot that ever so slightly. So this is the magnetic compass, which is a pain in the butt because it sloshes about all over the place. So as you can see, we've gone past it. I guarantee when we roll out, we'll be bang on south. There you go. Um, so I was using this compass here, which is uh, the gyroscopic compass which is a little bit more robust to you turning and everything. It's not a magnetic compass. So we're just going to fly due south and hope that in the next two or three minutes we see Booker or I see something of the surroundings around Booker that I can navigate in. I know there is wind. That is going to be trying to throw us off. So we'll have to keep our eyes somewhat peeled. Now, of course, as we're flying out of the NDB, what we can do to be a little bit more accurate here is if I swing this round to south, so it doesn't actually matter, but let's say I want to go south. Now, if I keep the base of this arrow on south, then we must be flying due south of the NDB because this is pointing straight towards it, yeah? And if we are flying roughly south and we are at the base of this arrow, then it means that we must be somewhere on, on that line, give or take. It's not hugely accurate. Absolutely not very accurate at all but gives you a rough idea what's going on. So not only can we fly towards it, we can fly away from it as well, which is reasonably obvious. But if you want to fly straight away from it, so directly away from it, not um, you know on a particular heading, get your heading set up. Wow, it's getting a bit windy. Let's just knock our height down a smidge. Now we're always going to be going straight away from it. If you think about it, it's a point in space. If we're going away from it, you know, in a straight line and getting further away, we're, we're always sort of going to be going away from it. Um, but you can sort of picture the trigonometry maybe. But we, won't get, we, we don't need to go into the depths of all the sneaky... Um, Stuff you can do with and Oh, there's Booker down there, look. There we are. Fantastic. Easy as that. Good job I was paying attention. I thought it was a little bit further away. So, lights on, just in case anyone spawned in. Um, I've not got my map up, so I, I have no idea. In fact, I'd probably see on Vatspy there's no one there. But uh, 
nevertheless. Let's get our height down and our airspeed down and we'll join the circuit. Book of traffic, Gulf, Bravo Alpha Foxtrot Charlie, join in downwind 06 to land. 06 at Booker? I think it is. Anyway, whatever. Uh, we're far too high, but uh, there you go. It is 06. Uh, lovely. So we'll trim for descent. You want joystick cam. So you can see me stabbing at the controls. Come on, we need the speed back, please. That's about 600 feet above Booker. And we'll take flat one. Wait for the flaps to come down and then start our turn base. Don't want to be putting flaps down as you're turning. That's, um, that's a good way to stall out. Oh, God, bloody high wings. Can't see anything. And there's base. Can we get flat to 20 degrees? Yes, we can. And then straight on to our final turn. Book of traffic, Gulf Fox Rock Charlie, final 06. Oh, oh. Yeah, all right, we're low. Well, we're only just low. Well, no, we're very low for a light aircraft. But I've certainly done worse at turns to finals. A lot worse. <laughs> Let's just trim. So at all times you want the aircraft trimmed so you can go hands-free. Makes your life a lot easier if you're not constantly fighting the stick. And if you fly in real life, or with a force feedback joystick, you'll know it saves your arm somewhat. Um, it can get very, very tiring. Uh, we're far too fast, but we're all right. As I say, this is not a lesson in how, how to fly well. And flare. Oh, yeah, there we go. Far too fast. Put the nose wheel through the cowling. Excellent, that's what we want. It wasn't the worst landing in the world. It certainly was not the best. So let's get quickly parked up and then I can show you the moving map. Uh, show you the effects of wind. And then, uh, then we're done for this video. Effects of wind is very, very important. We've not done how to compensate for that yet, but... Uh, that will be in a, in a later lesson. And yeah, rundown checks and strobe and all that sort of goodness. Let's just pretend we've... Oh my god, why can't I taxi? Just absolutely useless at taxiing in a simulator. This is much easier in real life. Much, much easier taxiing in real life. Very me. I promise you, I'm not pressing left or right. That's just the plane slewing like an absolute brute. Probably could show you the rudder pedals, but um, we're done now. So let's just park up vaguely decently. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Oh, oh it's electric flaps. That's all right. Then. We'll even open the door. Look, so we can get out. Not the worst parking in the world. These are light enough. You can spin it around. Anyway, <laughs> enough of me giving excuses. Let's have a look at how we did. So. Come on, Plan G. You know you want to. Let's let's see. Well, let's kill that sim. Let's kill that. No, that's got rid of my track. 
Argh, and blast, and damn it. Oh, I didn't think it was going to do that. Right. Hmm, how can I do this? Can I rewind in here? I bet I can't. Ah. So you what? We'll talk about it at the start of the next video because I can uh, <laughs> I can just do a screenshot of, of YouTube once the video's gone up. And we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it then. But until then, that's NDBs and how you use the ADF in the aircraft. All the uh, TLAs there. TLA, three-letter acronym. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, three letter abbreviation acronym whatever yeah hope you enjoyed see you for the next one and we'll be looking at ILS so that's the localizer and the glide slope so then ta-ta for now have a good weekend stay safe don't cough too much bye